Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for January 8th, 2022. Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. In this episode, we're having very sensitive but important topic of how to keep your kids safe while online. Uh, my name is Carl. Hi, this is Ahmad. And we're going to get into this right away. So, as we've discussed many times in many different episodes, more and more of our lives are getting integrated into the internet. And with that, more of our data is out there too. Things like home addresses and pictures of ourselves and many other things that we may or may not know that is out there. And with these data breaches going on and many different tools out there to search for things online, it's become easier and easier for people to get more personal information than maybe we'd want to. Uh, it's not so much of a problem for adults because hopefully we have the knowledge and maturity to know, okay, I don't need to do such and such online. But however, kids on the other hand may not have that uh, sense of maturity to know, okay, why don't I talk to this person that says that he's an eight-year-old kid from wherever. So do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I, you know, this... This all started with with you, you know, kind of <clears throat> teaching me the term online grooming, mm -hmm. right? Uh, can you can you describe what that is? Okay, so you can teach others. Yeah, <clears throat> so the the word grooming in general is a term used when when one adult would take an interest in either a minor or a kid or maybe another adult and kind of use little uh, tricks and things to kind of almost brainwash them into thinking the way that they want to think and eventually turn that their trust that they've gained to the other person to eventually turn it into a romantic kind of a relationship. So it may start off innocent, but then slowly they'll change the way that the other person thinks in a way that allows them to take advantage of them. Like, for example, a lot of uh, predators would uh, groom little kids to think, oh, it's okay to do certain things that only adults should be doing. <laughs> I'm trying not to get too graphic in here. So, yeah. So basically that's what grooming is. And with online grooming, instead of having all of this done physically face-to-face, -face, a lot of times this is done through the internet, either through web chats or emails or social media, stuff like that, where the predator will contact them through either a social media channels or something and start up a friendship maybe pretending to be someone their own age or something so that the parents don't get too wise on it. But then eventually things progress into a way that the child is in more danger to do things that they're really not supposed to be doing. Okay. Yeah. And another aspect of, of grooming is the the uh, the predator will also use or also leverage fear and shame to keep the child silent. Yeah. Right. And this is this is a this is a, a, a very important because it could be happening and we could as as parents we could think that everything is fine, but in mm -hmm. reality your child could be you know being bullied and being exploited online yeah. without you knowing because of the fear and shame that keep them keep them from telling you what's going on. Yeah. Like sometimes the predator would say, well, if you tell your parent, I'll kill them or something like that. Mm -hmm. And 
usually that fear of like, oh no, I don't want anything happening, so I better not say anything, or I don't want to get in trouble, and things like that. But it's very important to also keep an eye on your kid. You're not really... I, I hear some people saying like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to spy on my kid and just get in, invade their personal privacies? But at the same time, you have the balance between being what's no what you think of as being invasive versus being protective. Because with kids, with especially young kids, I really don't believe that they should have 100% privacy. They should have like a certain amount of it, granted, yes, but not 100% privacy. You should be involved in what they do, especially online, because they don't always have the knowledge or the maturity to say, okay, this is bad, I shouldn't be doing this. And they don't always be, they won't be able to always spot these things as fast as adults would. Right. Yeah, I mean... It there is a difference between privacy and and their online privacy, right? Anything yeah. that they're, do they're doing online is not private to begin with. So no. why would it be not private to the rest of the world, but to the person mm -hmm. that is closest to them, be private? Exactly. You know? yeah. um, like one of the things that you should do as a parent is always keep those devices where you can see them and the screens where you can see them. Mm -hmm. um, don't, don't, you know, face me and have the back of your device, you know, have me face the back of your device. No, I, I want, I will know what you're doing on your device at all times. Yeah. Um, and this is to me, I mean, we can, we can implement all types of uh, technical controls as far as like parental controls on our routers and our devices. Mm -hmm. But the first type of, of parental control is, is you as a parent watching yeah. and, and monitoring what happens on your network and on the, on your kids' devices. And also kind of, talk to your kids to kind of tell them okay people online are not who they say they are there and basically teach them to lie about their identity online because I think that is most important that's what I teach my kids like never ever tell them name address or anything personal at all because once that's out there like you said it's out there forever so basically tell the kids it's okay to lie online because you don't want to be targeted by the wrong people. I, I don't believe in, you know, making them afraid either, but kind of educate them. Like, there are going to be people out there who are not going to be good, just like out in the world. Like, you tell them stranger danger online, it should be like double stranger danger because there's no way to 100% verify some of these things especially if it's just text messages going back and forth you don't really know if that's the person you're really texting or some other person that no one knows about right right and also you know you mentioned you know talking to your children it, it goes both ways right you mm -hmm. allow them to talk back, to speak back to you and to tell you yeah. what they have and you know open openly what they are experiencing, you know, who they are speaking with, what mm -hmm. platforms they're on, if you allow them to be on any platforms, what video games. I mean, yeah. a lot of the games now they have video chat, yeah. but they have video chat and yeah. you have, uh, 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 you know, audio chat. I mean, you, you get, you put your VR headset on and now you're able to speak and hear what everybody's saying on the yeah. other yeah. end. And if you're outside of the VR headset, you're not hearing anything. You're not mm -hmm. seeing anything. And so, it could be very bad if, Right. You can't be watched over and protected. Right. So another thing is I'd also be kind of kind of weary about giving kids social media. I know it's going to be the new thing, a new norm for kids, but but I think there should be some kind of... Um, basically education almost like between you two because like you said w with the open communication both ways another thing to also be really important is is to not judge them harshly when they do come to say okay i made a mistake or i did something i wasn't supposed to 
Because if you do kind of go hard on them, the next time they're not going to open up to you. They're going to be like, you know what? Last time my mother bit my head off, so I'm not going to tell her that I did this because I don't want to get my head bit off again. So it's also right. important to kind of be disappointed but not angry at them at the same time. I know it's going to be kind of hard for a parent sometimes to do that, but <laughs> if right. if you are too hard on them, eventually they're just going to keep keep it to themselves, and that's going to be twice as bad than anything right. else. And they'll always find loopholes where you can't, mm -hmm. you know, or you can't catch what they're doing, right? Yeah. Uh, one, one of the things that, that I, I read a long time ago, it was, you know, how, how Steve Jobs would not allow his kids to have screen time, right? Yeah. Very limited. That. And for us in the cybersecurity world, you know, because of the amount of knowledge that we have in this, in this field, we don't allow our children to have, you know, uh, online presence, you know, generally speaking, um, you know, because we know how much information can, can be not just leaked out there, but can be voluntarily put out there or, or, or even tricked taken yeah. by, you know, your applications that you're running on your, on your devices and pushing all that information outside of your network. And just mm -hmm. like you said, once it's out there, it's out there forever. So yeah. as, as a parent, you have to be the gatekeeper of what digital content is not just coming into your your network or into your child's brain but what's leaving your network what's yeah. being put out there right um and and also like you know what you said is you know we don't tell people where name or or location but there's also a there's also technical controls where we can you know apply Limit those, yeah. your children where hey no do not geotag you know, Please yourself in, 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 in anything. Do not uh, give your GPS coordinates to your your browser, you know, mm -hmm. things like, like that. You're doing your homework and you'll log in. Okay, you'll, you'll get this message. Say, hey, do you want me to get your location? No, you don't want to do that. Why? And explain to them why. Yeah. Okay? So all this stuff, you know, like, remember, we always talk about a layered approach to everything, whether it's defense of a network, defense of of data defense of what gets into your child's brain yeah and the last right. line would be the parent right unfortunately <laughs> um but it is very important to keep an eye on what your kids are doing especially especially with so many different people out there that may try to take advantage of them because i've heard of many different uh different scenarios where kids were tricked by adults to meet up with them and then they were never seen from again and that's kind of sad to hear those kind of stories and the parents are always like oh i didn't know what was going on because da, 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 da. it's like imagine how bad it would feel if your kid was out there doing whatever online and you don't know about it and then the next thing you wake up they're gone so I know many people will think I don't want to be a helicopter parent, but at the same time, you need to be involved, mm -hmm. even if it's just, okay, I'm screening all of your friends just to make sure they are who they are, mm -hmm. or I'm going to make sure you're not going to get these accounts because these accounts could lead to d this, that, and the other, and kind of explain to your kid why you're doing it. No, don't just say, you're not going to get this because I said so. Because that's not really going to work. You have to explain to them why and reason with them. And that will go over a lot better than saying, you're not going to get this because I said so. Right. And, you know, sometimes, you know, what happens online, it may not get to the point where there's an actual uh, physical interaction between mm -hmm. a predator and a child. But a an aspect of it is cyberbullying. Yeah. Right? And we hear a lot about children that because of their immaturity and their lack of knowledge and lack of emotional stability, um, you know, at a very young age, they'll get depressed and some of them will even commit suicide. And you hear about mm -hmm. that online in the news all the time. Yeah. Well, where did that start? It started at home with you allowing opening that port, opening the portal to the outside world 
to, to things that you don't know what, where, where you're allowing adults or even other children to bully your kids. I mean, imagine yeah. if you take your kid out to the park and somebody comes in, you know, who's your age or older or younger and they bully them. How, how upset would you get and what, to what lengths would you go to so, protect your child just from that? Yeah. Why don't we take that same approach when we're exposing our children to the vast online world that is actually, you know, infinitely more dangerous than just taking them down the street to a park? And a lot of times, a lot of these cyber bullies can't be identified. Right. And that's why they're so comfortable doing it online is because there is that clout of partial anonymity where people can't always track them down. And a lot of times law enforcement won't, unfortunately, won't step in until it is too late, until there is like someone hurting themselves or someone else, then they'll interfere. But if it's just words going back and forth, a lot of times they say, well, we can't do anything until a crime has occurred and that's kind of sad because the damage is done by then yeah yeah you don't want to wait you don't want to wait that long you yeah. know when, when when you know you can you can protect your children from the get-go yeah right. so <sighs> another another thing that that um that kind of is a challenge and I know it may be more of a challenge to somebody who is not in the industry, is uh, staying relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, when when you and I were growing up, you know, it was MySpace and Facebook, and yeah. we and and till now, you know, we still use it to keep in contact with with our friends and family. <laughs> but those platforms are are ancient. If you compare them to yeah. what's going on with you know uh, Snapchat and Instagram and, and TikTok, TikTok and, yeah. <laughs> and, and all that, what the, the you know the, the the kids are using nowadays, well, you have to remain relevant. If you mm -hmm. allow this type of behavior, if you allow this type of access, which I I, I do not condone whatsoever, you know. Yeah. If, but if you do, and this is how you choose to to operate in your own in your realm, great. But be aware, be aware, and stay relevant to the changing. Uh, technologies that is out that are, that's out there mm -hmm. if you allow your children to use it and a lot of times these kids if you have an open enough dialogue with them they'll share with you what they're using but i think a parent should what they should do is screen all of these different technologies before they're allowed to be installed on the computer or the cell phone or whatever just so that a, you could read up on it and kind of teach yourself, okay, what's this new TikTok thing I'm hearing about or this next wave of VR sets or whatever the next technology on the horizon will be. And then tell them, okay, if you want to use this, let me know about it first and then I will look into it. And if I will allow you, I will put limitations and all this, that and the other. And... This way, the kid will say, okay, this is what's new. Okay, you can take the name, look it up, research it, and then do your... And, and use promises. it. Not yeah, and use it. Yeah. Read, up, read up on it. You have to. Have, you to, have to use to it, use yeah. It. Because right. sometimes you won't know the full extent of it until right. you're in the mix of it. Because right. there are things like... Uh, what I think Omigo. Omega. It's like... A, it's a website oh, where you go, the, Amigo, the yeah. Video chat, yeah. Yeah, where you go online with a web camera and you just randomly connect to different people. Well, some people are doing some very inappropriate things during Amigo, and you won't know that unless you're actually using it and try it out to say, okay, I hear that this is like a video conference with random people. It's like, okay, it does. It seems harmless enough, but then when you go on there and you see some of the inappropriate stuff going on in there, you're like, whoa, whoa, no way I'm going to let my kid go on there. But right. you would never know until you actually use the product. Right. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that, that pretty much, you know, yeah. included very good tips. If, if we just, you know, apply it and try to, to kind of mold it to our needs and what we're trying to achieve and the amount the, the type of protection we want for our children. I think, I think we'll, we'll have a much more pleasant online presence. Yeah. yeah. And, and there are many resources out there 
like the FBI scam and safety websites, which we will link in the description, which goes over a lot of different things that we talked about and kind of gives you resources to not only look up people to see if they are a sex offender, but also how to report people that you suspect are are being inappropriate with your kids so that they could look into it because if they are kind of trying to groom your kid the FBI does take that kind of seriously because it is especially if they are exchanging explicit images or text messages the FBI could step in because that is really illegal for for adults to do but just know that there are resources out there if you need them and is there anything else you want to add in before we close it up no i think uh that's, that's it yep all right so just remember keep involved in your kids lives and i know it's really hard to be a parent in the digital age but as long as you are willing to balance you know the digital freedom with protection and be more proactive in your kids lives you could easily avoid a lot of these bad situations especially if you are monitoring what your kids are allowed to access online and understand it better just by doing a quick maybe hour tinkering around with whatever new technologies there are out there because there are a lot of good that comes with technology but also bad so just don't be afraid and just and don't shelter your kids either because that's not going to be helpful either so just kind of learn that balance and there is no right or wrong answer there's no like Okay, follow these steps and you'll be 100% protected, but just be more involved and just use more common sense. Because think about, like, would you want anyone to know about the information about your kid? If not, then it probably shouldn't be online. And just kind of teach your kid that too. Because one example I really like from someone that I've heard was, they told their kid, would you want whatever picture or whatever thing that you're posting online to be plastered out in the front of your classroom for, ev for the whole classroom to see? If the answer is no, then don't put it online. If the answer is yes, then it might be appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it, it's kind of like that. The internet is like a big classroom for anyone to see. And right. there are some times where things are not appropriate to share. And there are times where, yeah, some things are appropriate to share. You just got to kind of think about it and know the difference and teach your kid about those differences and just be a better, not only parent, but also kind of a role model. Kind of, kind of use these examples for yourself too. Like don't overshare everything online either. Because I see some parents who constantly show pictures on the Facebook about all their kids. And instead of making those kind of restricted to certain people online, they're uploaded as public for anyone to see. So just keep in mind that if it's public, anyone can see it. And if you're not comfortable with the world seeing it, then probably don't post it online at all. So with this said... This will end this episode before I start rambling on and on. <laughs> and this, so we'll see you next week. Hopefully we are working on a home network guide for people so that you'll know how to set up your home network and how to protect yourself online and to stop people from just poking into your network willy-nilly. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode.
Thanks for listening to the Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates. Join us next time when we dive into more security issues and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast, stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com.